For this video, we're going to take a scenic boat ride at Homosassa Springs State Park. back in Homosassa Springs, Florida, and I'm about to enter the Ellie Schiller's Homosassa Springs Wildlife State Park. Now what's interesting about this state park is it actually dates back to the 1880s when it was first recognized as a tourist attraction. The railroads used to stop here so that passengers could basically take a breather from the non-air conditioned trains and probably go swimming in the springs. This particular park went through multiple owners and expansions over the years. When you look around this building where the boat dockage is, you'll scratch your head and say, this looks a lot more elaborate than most state parks. And you would be right, because this wasn't always a state park. That first building that you're looking at when this video opens was built in the 1970s. It was an expansion attempt for this local tourist attraction to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Walt Disney World. As a for-profit tourist attraction, it really didn't work out for them. So they eventually went out of business and the state turned this into a state park. There's several interesting aspects of Homosassa Springs State Park. First of all, it's one of the few botanical zoos that's operated in the Florida State Park system. This place was kind of grandfathered into the system. Florida State Park System really doesn't like to deal with animals and animal enclosures, but that was the nature of this particular park when it was a private tourist attraction. So they basically adapted themselves to make it all work. So as we're proceeding up this canal, you're going to notice the Bella Oasis Hotel on the right-hand side. That hotel actually has its own private bridge into the parking lot here. I believe um, that bridge was built in the 1970s when they were building this up to be one of the big Florida tourist attractions. But I could be wrong about that because the bridge itself looks pretty well maintained and modern so it might have been built after this became a state park. So these waterways that we're traveling on right now date back thousands of years. The indigenous people to this area once used these waterways for hunting and fishing and now they are a tourist attraction. Another unique aspect of Homosassa Springs State Park is this place has multiple entrances. The major entrance is located on Sun Coast Boulevard and that's the big building that we started out at the beginning of this boat trip. Now that is one of the travel options that you can take to the main gate. There is also a passenger tram that you can take as well to shuttle you to the front parking lot. If you want to skip that boat ride or passenger tram, you can enter the park directly on Fishbowl Drive. However, the parking lot at that location is very limited. That's why this expansion was built in the 70s to accommodate larger crowds, especially on holiday weekends when this place is pretty busy. Not all Florida State Parks have restaurants inside the park, but because Homosassa Springs is one of the higher attended parks in the Florida State Park system, they actually do. Uh, when you enter the uh, main gate on Fishbowl Drive, you will see the Wild Side Cafe. And they've got, you know, what you would expect in a park menu. It's hot dogs, french fries, soda, that kind of stuff. Nothing spectacular, but it is a great option when you're hungry and don't want to leave the park. And the prices are, eh, they're fair. There's actually gift shops at the main gate on Fishbowl Drive as well as the large education center where you come in to ride the boat on Suncoast Boulevard. This boat ride, even though it's basically just shuttling you to the parking lot, is incredibly popular with the state park guests. 
I'm not sure if people are aware of the second entrance on Fishbowl or just everybody loves this boat ride because this boat ride is nearly always packed and a lot of people bring binoculars because they like to go bird watching on this particular boat cruise and I did see quite a few birds and there were definitely a couple fish and turtles and one or two alligators just kind of sunning themselves on the side of the canal. If you're coming out to this state park, I definitely recommend parking at Suncoast and taking the boat ride. The parking lot tram that runs the road, you know, adjacent to this canal, definitely gets to the parking lot faster than the boat. But you ride this boat for the whole experience. The park rangers narrate most of the crews, so you learn all kinds of interesting facts, many of which I've shared already. But this boat ride is what I would call an e-ticket attraction for, for people who go to theme parks. You're really kind of missing out on the whole state park experience here if you don't at least ride it once. One of the things that you're going to notice on this particular boat tour is the park rangers do stop from time to time and will point out when they see uh, one of the more interesting native birds like up in trees and you're going to see along this canal uh, several birdhouses where they actually leave bird seed and actually draw the really interesting birds here. This is a really wonderful experience if you are a bird watcher because there were several on this particular boat and they were really having a great time. If you're a real cheapskate, this particular boat ride is technically free. They don't charge the admission fee to get into the state park until you get to that main gate on Fishbowl Drive. As for the admission price itself, it's $13 for adults. It's about $5 for children ages 6 to 12. And all the kids under 5 years old actually get in for free, so the prices are pretty reasonable. You'll notice that the boat captain is currently reversing his engines. He's trying to take advantage of one of the few spots on the waterway that are wide enough to let the other boat, which is heading towards Suncoast Boulevard, to pass. Uh, I was really impressed by these boat captains. Their timing is pretty impeccable. I'm not going to try to talk through the entire 15 minute video today. I'll let the scenery do most of the work. When there's something interesting on screen, I'll be sure to point it out. Okay, so one of the things you'll notice is I am dissolving here and there and kind of speeding up some of the trip. There were a couple times where we had to stop and look at animals, but the animals weren't really within camera range. And I clocked this overall boat trip roughly about 25 minutes. And then there was another five minutes of waiting in line. So, and with the docking and everything, you're looking at probably about 30 to 35 minutes to get from the front parking lot on Sun Coast Boulevard to the main gate. That's a fair amount of time, you know, compared to, say, the monorail at Disney World, um, which is more like a 5 to 10 minute uh, time frame. This does eat up a lot of time going this way. So I do understand why some people just go straight to the main gate on Fistbowl. I prefer taking my time and enjoying the location. I loved the boat tour and the fact that it lasted a half hour made it worthwhile for me.
So if you're an animal lover, there's a kind of a weird attraction near here in Homosassa Springs called Monkey Island. And apparently that's where five spider monkeys are currently living. Don't get too close to the island because those monkeys are also known to jump onto boats and try to escape their little, I guess, Alcatraz situation where they're kind of sitting on that island. Obviously, that monkey island isn't on this particular uh, waterway. That place is located at the Florida Cracker Riverside Resort. But it's not far from here. It's probably only about a 10 minute drive from this location. So I've now mentioned the entrance at Fishbowl Drive a couple times, but what exactly is the Fishbowl? In the 1950s, when Homosassa Springs was trying to bring in more tourism, they actually invested in the Fishbowl, which is this underwater observation deck. It's apparently one of the first of its kind where they just sank this um, building with windows that were strong enough to basically submerge underwater, and it's pretty cool. I did cover it when I filmed my earlier video on Homosassa Springs. They've restored it a couple times and it is looking great considering it is now 67 years old. So this was one of the few opportunities where the park ranger pointed out some wildlife that was actually close enough for me to actually film it. Here you can see some turtles kind of lounging on a branch, just sunning themselves, trying to stay warm. And here's a little uh, successful bird watching. I'm terrible picking out birds, but I think this bird is a heron. But don't quote me on that, I'm not sure. One of the interesting things about the trees on this waterway is you'll see a lot of them that are lying sideways or growing sideways. Apparently those are remnants of hurricane damage from Hurricane Gladys that hit the area in 1968. They uh, experienced about 100 mile an hour winds during that hurricane and the trees basically fell over even if they were young trees and some of them survived even growing sideways. So we're coming up on the boat dockage at Fishbowl Drive. If you look closely, you can see the tourist tram station behind this dockage. And across the street is the main gate for Homosassa Springs State Park. So we finally arrived. Thanks for joining me on this scenic boat tour of Homosassa Springs State Wildlife Park. If you liked today's episode, 
Don't forget to like and subscribe.